Centering the clay is the cornerstone throwing on the wheel. It's the process that must be done before any pot can be formed. And the aim of this video is to go over that process in exacting detail, alongside discussing many of the tips and tricks I've learned over the years. It begins, of course, with clay, but more specifically, it's the wedging of clay, which is important for throwing. But I've already made a much more in-depth video about that, which I'll leave a link to on screen now and in the description below. Simply put, this is the process of kneading clay until it's one even texture throughout and void of any air pockets that might lie within. And these irregularities will only make the centering and throwing process more difficult, which makes it a step you don't want to skip, as learning to center can be difficult enough already as a beginner. The first thing we'll discuss is the shape of the lumps of clay used to throw with. You want them to be regular, ideally with a rounded base, so when thrown against the wheel, it doesn't trap air beneath it, and with either conical tapering walls that lead up to the top, or perhaps more easily for a beginner, you should pat a well-wedged lump of clay into a ball shape, like so. What you don't want to use is an irregular shape like this, as although you can centre lumps like that, as a beginner it'll be far more difficult. So make sure the lumps of clay you're using are well wedged and regular in shape. And now the centering can begin. The first thing you want to consider is how you sit at the wheel. You don't want to be too far away from the tray or the metal wheel head. Instead you want to scoot your legs forward so they're around it. And so your head, when leant over a little bit, is more or less directly over the top of the lump of clay. I then take my left arm and I shove my elbow into my torso and then I just lean my upper body weight forward slightly onto that arm to stabilize it. What you don't want is both of your elbows up in the air like this as you're trying to center, as they aren't braced against anything. So instead, I tuck my elbows into my waist and I lean my upper body weight forwards onto them. The first thing we need to discuss though is attaching the clay down to the wheel head. Like we spoke about earlier, it helps to have an even round shape that's thrown against the wheel. This way no air can be trapped beneath the clay when it's slammed down. And you can see, just by placing it roughly in the middle, how centred it was. Compare that to this irregular lump, which even when placed in the centre spins and wobbles on its central axis. And you'll see, when I try to centre a piece like this, how difficult it can be to centre as those undulations slap into your hand as the lump spins around. And for a beginner this could be quite difficult to control, so don't use lumps of clay like this, and instead patch your balls of clay into spheres like so, or at least into a shape with a rounded base and a conical top. Now, the obvious first step is to throw the clay as accurately into the middle as you possibly can, and to slam it down firmly, this way it sticks onto the metal. And one thing I do is use the rings that most wheel heads have in order to tell if the lump of clay is in the middle. Because as you spin the wheel you'll notice that the lump of clay will probably have a larger gap on one side as compared to the other. And all you need to do to remedy this is to push the clay away from where it's closest to the line until the gap between the clay and the line is more or less the same all the way around. At this point you can even pat the lump of clay into shape a bit to get it as centred as possible before you begin to add water to it and begin the process properly. Initially attaching it very firmly is crucial though, and what you don't want to do is slam it down onto a surface that's already quite wet, as the lump of clay just won't stick to it properly. So ideally you want a dry wheel head and a dry lump of clay, otherwise this is what happens when you begin to centre. The lump will just fling itself off, but there is a remedy to this. The first step is to clean the wheel head. I sponge away the excess clay, and then I dry the metal off with a towel. I then take the lump of clay, and I scrape away all the wet slip on the bottom of it, and then I slam this drier, tackier area onto the metal. There is an exception to this rule, and that's when you're throwing on a slightly porous surface. In this instance, such as when I'm throwing on MDF wood, it helps the piece of clay stick if I dampen the surface. So to begin, I tuck my arm into my waist, and I'm also resting my forearm onto the plastic wheel tray. I then position my forearm so it lines up perfectly with the lump of clay, and I want the ball of my thumb and the base of my palm to be pushing in a straight line that intersects the middle of the lump of clay. It's not off to the left, like this, nor is it too far to the right. Instead you want it so everything lines up. So now after all of that, let's really get started. I slam the clay firmly onto the metal wheel head and push it roughly in the centre. And you can already see that the piece is quite centred, although there's a lot more that needs to be done before it can be thrown into a pot. 
So, I begin by bracing my left arm into my torso and onto the wheel tray, and I lean my upper body weight onto that arm, and I lean all of that onto the lump of clay. And I'll use this moment to talk about the importance of water throughout this process. The clay needs to remain lubricated the entire time, be it with slip or water. And if you ever feel your hands beginning to stick to the lump of clay, or if you feel any friction, it's time to add more water, which I typically do just with a cupped hand, or I sometimes just keep a sponge handy, which I can dip into the water in the wheel tray to soak it up and squeeze it out onto the clay. As my left hand's palm pushes in, I take the little finger of that hand and I squeeze it around the base firmly. This creates a seal against the metal wheel head and another barrier to ensure that it's stuck down securely. It also neatens the clay around the base and simply stops it from spreading out onto the metal wheel head. So far, I've only been applying horizontal pressure to the piece of clay, which means the lump will become ever more conical. So I need to introduce another hand, which applies some vertical pressure. And I do this by using the side of my right hand to push down on the piece of clay to contain it. I push down directly over the middle of the piece of clay, matching the pressure my left arm is applying, and I corral the piece of clay into a disc shape, like so. And this part is really important, applying both an even pressure from the side and the top, as if the pressure exerted with my left hand is too great, the lump of clay will cone up, and if I push down too firmly with my right hand, I'll squash the piece of clay down into a pancake. So it's an even amount of pressure from both the side and the top, which is what we're after. And I sometimes take the slip from the wheel head itself, like so, to lubricate the lump. Those are the hand positions I use, but there are others. For instance, you can apply pressure from both sides and then use your thumbs to apply downward pressure. But personally, I find this a little bit uncomfortable and I feel as if I have a lot more downward control when I use the side of my right hand in order to push down. And as I center, I try to squeeze the lump of clay with all of my digits of my left hand as if I'm gripping a ball tightly. And as all those fingers are squeezing and I'm leaning in with my left arm, my right hand pushes down from on top. It's worth knowing that probably every potter out there centers a little bit differently. We all follow a similar set of rules, but ultimately our hands are all different sizes and shapes, and that affects how we hold them and use them for this process. So don't be surprised when you see potters doing this process, but with their hands in different positions, they'll still essentially be following the same principles, just in slightly different positions. One thing that's important is to not let the clay control your movements. For instance, I place my forearm down so securely that the clay has to conform to the shape I've given it. If the clay is wobbling, you don't want to let your hand simply follow the wobbling piece of clay. Instead, you need to position your arm and your hand so securely that the soft, wet clay has no other place to go other than the area you've designated for it. And the shape you see here is a good starting point. It has a flat top and only very slightly curved sides that meet the wheel head flush. You don't want a piece of clay which has too much of an indentation at the bottom. It's now the center of gravity is slightly higher and you might have a harder time opening it up later on. You also don't want a shape that bulges up in the middle unnecessarily so, as that means you have to push down further and perhaps unnecessarily so when creating the hollow and forming the base of the pot. If you happen to be using a clay which contains quite a lot of grog, one that's quite coarse, if you feel like the surface is starting to feel like sandpaper, it's best to scrape away the outermost layer and then proceed with centering as normal. It's also worth knowing that if you are feeling this, you're probably taking too much time to center your clay. It isn't a process that's worth rushing at the beginning, but you also don't want to spend 10 minutes doing this every time you make a pot, otherwise you'll never make anything. And ideally, this is a process that you should be able to complete in about 10 to 40 seconds. But this does depend, of course, on the size of clay, and larger lumps can take much longer. Another thing we should discuss is the speed at which the wheel is spun. You don't want to do this process really slowly. So once again, it'll just mean it takes longer. And say, when you are throwing dozens of bowls and mugs, you really want to minimize the amount of time you spend centering the clay. So I spin the wheel very quickly, although I don't max it out. In fact, I never really do. There's virtually no need to ever put your foot down all the way. But I do spin the wheel quickly, fast enough, that however I push my fingers and hands into the lump of clay, it affects the entire piece practically instantly, which means you want it to be rotating many times every second. If you spin the wheel too slowly, it means you need to linger with each movement you place on the lump of clay to ensure that it remains the same on the entire piece of clay. So don't go slowly and don't go at a medium pace. Instead, push it just that bit further. Another thing I often see beginners do 
is they push this part of their hand too firmly against the metal of the wheel, to a degree that the metal can almost wear away the skin and it can become quite painful to center. You never want to push these fingers directly down onto the metal wheel head, and you'll know if you're pushing too hard against the metal if you can see this metal residue coming off on your hand. Instead, you want to just glide above the metal, ideally with a thin skim of slip between the two, which will naturally accumulate as you center the clay, and you'll hear when you're pushing. So if you feel the friction on your hand and hear the grinding noise, just lift your hand up a millimetre or so, so it's above the spinning metal. Another thing I do to ensure that the clay is centred is I watch my fingertips instead of the clay itself. If the clay is off centre, my fingertips will wobble along with the clay. And if I notice that, I squeeze my fingertips inward against the clay and I really focus on them not wobbling whatsoever. They're firmly tensed and if they're unwavering, then the clay underneath them should be quite centred. So if you watch that again, and I'll purposefully knock the lump off centre, I lean the palm and the ball of my thumb of my left hand into the block of clay, pushing forwards, and then I tense those wobbling digits so they're completely still, and then I take my right hand and bring it down on top and compress. Sometimes, in between pots, you'll have this skim of dry clay left, and I often see people remove it in between throwing new pots, which is something you shouldn't do, as as long as it's dry, it'll help the clay stick down much more firmly than it would otherwise, like Velcro. Once firmly attached, I can begin to centre as normal, but this time I'm going to introduce a new element, which we call coning. This is when the lump of clay is coned up and down between the palms of my hands. This is almost like wedging the clay, but on the wheel, and with each cone up and each cone down, you'll feel the clay becoming more orderly beneath your hands. This is because the particles which make up the clay, the platelets, gradually become more aligned. The analogy I use is to think of clay like a bag of rice. Before it's been wedged, all the grains are facing in all kinds of directions. They're completely mixed, and there's no order. But as the clay is combed down, it causes the platelets to collapse onto one another and align facing the same direction, and in turn this makes the lump of clay more plastic and more easily throwable. So I cone the clay up carefully, and then when it comes to pushing it back down, I make sure I lean it over slightly as I apply downward pressure. So I tend to push the cone both forwards and down in the same motion, and this causes the clay to bulge towards the base of the lump, which keeps it quite manageable and easy to work. If on the other hand, you cone the piece of clay up, and then just push it directly down, the bulge of clay will begin to accumulate directly in your hands, which makes this process quite difficult to control, like you'll see here. The point of coning is that even sometimes, with really thoroughly wedged clay, the lump might spin with some kind of irregularity within it, but after you've coned it up three or four times, the lump of clay will begin to feel wonderfully smooth, and you should have an easier time opening up the lump and pulling up the walls of clay, which will be the topic of my next very in-depth video, like this one. So I lean the clay over to one side, and as you can see the bulge begins to build up towards the base. So that's coning. It's not necessary for every single pot you make, but it's worth learning and it's worth practicing, and it can sometimes make all the difference. For instance, when I'm throwing larger masses of clay, or pots that are perhaps a bit more complicated than a mug or a bowl, I'll always make sure to cone the clay up and down a number of times. This next tip is perhaps a bit more subtle in nature, and it has to do with how you place your hands onto the lump of clay and how you remove them. The first thing you want to think about is you only ever want to make contact with the clay when it's spinning, and the same goes for when you release your hands. You never want to stop the wheel and then release your hands, nor do you want to place your hands onto a stationary lump and then begin spinning it. In actuality, what you want is for the lump of clay to always be spinning when you touch it and remove your hands from it. Think of it like turning wood on a lathe. You would never place the gouge onto the stationary piece of wood and then start up the machine that rotates it. And when you're turning wood on the lathe, you always want the piece to be spinning before you try to do anything to it. And the same goes for clay. Another thing to think about is how you release your hands from the lump of clay. Ideally, you want to release them very gently, like so. As if you release your hands too abruptly, like this. You'll notice if you look carefully, a very slight wobble in the lump of clay, and if you do this, just before you make the hole to form the base, 
your pot could become slightly off-centred, even when you thought you centred it perfectly. Placing your hands onto the lump of clay isn't so important, as you can immediately centre them and hold them still, but when you release your hands, you want to do it very gently, just to detach any connection they might have, and with enough practice it just looks like you're removing your hands normally. Being able to centre well is vital for learning to throw on the wheel. It's the first step in the process of throwing a pot. If done improperly, it makes the entire process of throwing pots more difficult. And at the start, when you're learning to throw, centering can feel really difficult. I certainly remember what it was like. But after you've thrown a hundred, a thousand, and ten thousand pots, it really does become second nature. More often than not, the reason you might have difficulty centering a lump will be due to the fact that the clay is too firm, or far too soft for it to even be centred in the first place. My final bit of advice would be not to get too hung up on getting it perfect straight away. Centre the clay roughly, pull up the walls roughly, and try and get some finished pieces off, as seeing the process through to the end and making some pots, even if they're wobbly and chunky and a bit heavy. It's those first pots that plant the seed and draw people into this craft. Everything after that is just a matter of practice, and soon you'll forget that you ever even struggled with centering. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this useful.